Welcome to a tutorial on analog electronics and uh, today uh, the type of device which we're going to discuss okay is actually a special type of FET so there we go its name is a bit too long okay so it's basically a metal okay known as uh, this is basically its name okay in full form so it's known as the metal oxide okay so there we go semiconductor alright field okay effect there you go transistor so by this time I think you'll have already got the heck of what I'm just gonna say next okay so if we just take the initials okay then we get the actual uh, the p most popular way of expressing uh, the name of this device okay that's the MOSFET so this is basically our uh, subject of discussion today in this tutorial okay so the MOSFET is of course a special type of FET okay special type of field effect transistor that is and it is you know um, a much superior design over the JFET design and uh, it is presently being used widely in the electronics industry as per uh, I mean high speed applications and high power applications are concerned okay so um, having said that if you all need to understand about how the MOSFET basically works and how it just functions so we need to go to its structure first so let me just change the color for the moment and there it is we have or rather we're just gonna discuss right now the structure of the MOSFET so it's gonna be up shortly yeah there you go so we have a diagram over here okay that would just depict the structure of the MOSFET so if you just take a look at the diagram then you can see uh, this white region basically represents a substrate matter okay or rather yeah this basically represents a substrate so and this n-type symbol on the uh, substrate matter indicates that is basically an n-type semiconductor material okay forming the substrate all right that apart from uh, that you, if you just take a look over here on the upper side of the substrate we have uh, two yellow outlined regions okay one to the left and the other to the right so both of them are p type regions over here so the substrate is just being doped okay to uh, you know uh, form two p type regions over here and notice that they have a positive sign over them so basically these regions are you know heavily doped as we can understand okay so basically they are heavily doped p type regions that is so apart from that we have this uh, light blue uh, shaded region of on the uh, you know the substrate matter so this basically is an insulator okay so this basically is an insulator material okay and generally it's made out of silicon dioxide okay so the MOSFET okay that we're just going to discuss I mean just that we're just discussing over here was uh, previously known as the IGFET okay so this meant I mean the full form for this was insulated gate okay field effect transistor so now we can see from this uh, diagram that there is a insulation layer okay on the uh, top of the substrate matter and apart from that this uh, dark blue areas represent the uh, metal contacts okay so now from these metal contacts basically I'll just write it a little further so that I can just label them okay so these uh, represents basically metal contacts okay so these metal contacts basically are uh, you know provided in order to draw out the terminals specifically made out of aluminium okay so now the uh, this was basically known as uh, I mean it's also known as the uh, IG FET previously uh, that's the insulated gate field effect transistor for the reason that it has an insulation layer okay insulating the uh, substrate from the um, yeah the yeah insulating the substrate from uh, the metal caps okay so there you go so apart from that uh, okay so this uh, insulator since it's made out of a metallic silicon material okay so you can see that it's just made out of a um, sil I mean it's just made out of an oxide of silicon over here since it's a good insulator so that's why it just came to be known as later okay it just came to be known as the MOSFET so that's where it, it just got the name of metal oxide semiconductor so you can see here there is an oxide layer okay forming the insulation so it's a metal that's an oxide layer and here's the semiconductor so metal oxide 
semiconductor so that's one two and three so there you go so that's how it just got its name and known as the MOSFET okay so now as you can uh, just uh, see from this uh, diagram that there is the metal contacts over here and just notice the fact that um, the middle terminal that we're just talking about over here is referred to as the gate okay so that's the gate terminal over here so now the gate and the substrate matter has no uh, common contact I mean they have no physical contact between them okay there is basically a layer of silicon dioxide okay forming the insulation uh, between the gate metal contact and the substrate material okay so now if you're wondering about how uh, this uh, device would uh, you know basically function then let me just tell you since uh, it's an n-type substrate and then if we just go forward and apply a um, okay let's go forward and apply a negative voltage over this okay so just hold on for a second there okay so if we just go forward and apply a negative voltage on the gate terminal then basically what would happen is that since it's an n-type substrate okay it has two types of you know uh, carriers respectively okay so one is the majority carrier okay so there you go that's the majority carriers and the other one is of course the minority carriers that is just I mean that's just you know housed over here in the substrate so the majority carriers in the substrate are of course the electrons okay while the minority carriers in uh, the substrate are the holes okay so let's write it down over here uh, yeah that's right it's the holes so we have the uh, electrons okay so there you go I'll just write it in full form over here so you'll have the electrons alright and here we get the uh, holes over here as the minority carriers so now whenever we would apply this uh, negative uh, voltage upon the gate terminal the phenomena that would occur over here is that the minority carriers you know would just uh, gather out okay they'll just uh, gather out near uh, the um, yeah near the uh, insulation layer over here okay so they'll just you know gather out over here that's the holes okay so the green ones they are just you know holes okay so the minority carrier that's the holes over here would just you know, gather out um, you know very close to uh, the um, region uh, at the contact point of the uh, semiconductor substrate material and the insulation layer okay so they'll just you know uh, gather out over here and they'll just form a cluster and now this cluster in eventually you know would give rise to uh, a channel over here so if you would just you know take a look at this one then you'll get to see that it'll just form a channel a p type channel over here would be formed okay so there you go so once this channel is just being formed over here you can see that since it's the minority carriers okay so this uh, channel is not of course you know uh, cannot have a heavy concentration of uh, holes over here compared to the um, you know uh, heavily doped p type regions on either side of the channel okay so this is basically uh, the conducting channel that's being formed over here so here you go that's the conducting channel okay so now uh, if you just take a look over here that since a conducting channel is just formed between the um, two heavily doped p-type uh, regions on the substrate material okay so now uh, there is a very high probability that a that we can uh, you know make current flow through this uh, channel okay it, it might enter uh, through this terminal and leave through the other one and vice versa so if we just you know go forward and apply you know a uh, positive voltage onto the terminal on the left I mean on the extreme left and a negative voltage on the terminal at the extreme right then from the terminal on the extreme left what will happen is that holes I mean yeah uh, holes would basically you know, enter into this channel and leave through the right terminal so here as you can see that uh, since the holes are the uh, you know the car carriers okay the charge carriers I mean the majority charge carriers in this uh, system over here that's the uh, two uh, 
heavily doped p-type regions and their channel in between okay so since the whole serve as the you know majority carriers in this system so therefore uh, this would be known as the source okay so this terminal would be known as a source since from this terminal we are just injecting the majority carriers into the uh, you know device okay and the other uh, terminal over here through which the holes would just basically exit out of the device would be known as the drain so that's basically the terminal to the extreme right over here so if we would just you know uh, reverse the connection that's if we just you know uh, applied the um, positive voltage over here at the terminal on the uh, right and the negative voltage on the terminal on the extreme left then the source and the drain would just have been reversed okay so just keep that uh, that that's just an information for your reference okay so now this is how uh, the um, device works okay whenever we would apply a negative voltage over here the holes would accumulate near the uh, insulation layer thereby forming a channel acting as a conducting path over here between the two heavily doped p-type regions in the substrate material so now if we just take a look over here since in this um, you know in this uh, uh, structure or rather in this diagram you can see that since it's a uh, I'm the I mean the channel here formed okay since it's a uh, P type channel or rather it's just constituted by holes okay we would just call this sort of a um, MOSFET as a P channel MOSFET okay so whichever type of you know uh, channel would be formed over here in between the heavily doped regions would just be I mean the MOSFET would just be named according to their term okay so that's how a MOSFET is named and a MOSFET basically works okay I'd also like to add the fact that uh, this uh, substrate material over here is basically you know lightly doped okay so the substrate material is lightly doped okay as in the case of JFETs okay and uh, as you can see here this uh, you know the insulator as I said it's basically a silicon dioxide okay and the substrate material selected is basically uh, silicon is preferred as you know uh, for the substrate material over here okay so having that said in this case I would also like to show you uh, the uh, circuit uh, symbol for uh, this MOSFET type device okay so I'll just use okay fine let me just change the color over here fine so uh, if we just you know uh, go to uh, just uh, view the circuit symbol over here then uh, a MOSFET basically looks something like this okay so there you go yep that's pretty much done so this is how a MOSFET would appear if ever drawn as a circuit symbol so here we can see uh, okay so here is the gate okay so let's make this as the drain okay and this as the source okay so then in the if this uh, is a P channel okay if this is a P channel uh, MOSFET so in that case the uh, arrow mark would be directed towards the gate okay at the source terminal so this is basically what the uh, P channel uh, MOSFET circuit symbol looks like okay so there you go that's the circuit symbol for the P channel MOSFET notice that there is no con physical contact between uh, the gate and uh, this channel over here so representing that there is an insulate insulation layer uh, in between them okay so there you go so this is basically uh, the MOSFET that we have discussed over here and the uh, gate and the uh, semiconductor substrate you know having an insulated layer between them has a very high input resistance okay so it has got a high input resistance okay so it, this basically you know lies in the order of about you know, 10 to the power 4 to about 10 to the power 9 mega ohms or so okay and there's of course this other counterpart of this P channel uh, MOSFET over here so I just like to show you over here yeah that's right so here's the diagram okay and in this diagram as you can see we have the structure of an N channel MOSFET okay this is basically the structure and here we have the uh, N channel being formed okay so there you go that's the N channel that's the N, N conducting channel okay I mean just constituted by means of electrons okay so with the, and there the uh, voltages you know applied to the uh, source drain and gate terminals would be respectively as you know shown over here in this diagram and there we go we have the circuit symbol for the N channel MOSFET as well so here you can just note the arrow mark is just directed you know uh, away from the gate 
at the source terminal. So that's uh, basically uh, how it just looks. Okay, and one more detail that I was just you know, skipping over here. You can see that uh, the uh, channel has a certain length, okay? So this length of the channel, okay, that's basically the physical distance between the two heavily doped p-type regions, okay, over here in the, uh, in case of the uh, p-channel MOSFET, okay, is just referred to as the, you know, the channel length, okay, and uh, in case of the n-type uh, MOSFET, I mean the n-channel MOSFET over here, so this physical distance right over here would represent the channel length, that's the uh, physical length I mean the physical distance between the two heavily doped n-type regions over here on the substrate. Okay, so just having said that, uh, the MOSFET uh, tutorial, uh, in this case, we would just you know, like to wrap up our discussion over here. So don't forget to watch our next tutorial on the um, next on the MOSFET topics. Okay, so just uh, it's goodbye for now and thanks for watching this tutorial.